On the Mac, the quickest way to find a file to, let's say, send to someone is via Spotlight. With its global search and few characters later, you'll end up seeing what you were seeking, but once you press on the file, you'll end up opening it instead of actually locating it to attach. Oh no, 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 no. Now, in order to find its actual location, all you have to do is press and hold command while tapping on it to see it revealed in Finder. After 16 years of using a Mac, there's always something new to learn. So in this video, I'll share with you the things that I discovered recently that made my life easier. I'm talking about simple things served in a tasteful pace. Yet, if you're completely new to the Mac, I suggest checking part one of my series as it covers the fundamentals. And with that, let's unwrap this part. And by the way, this video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. So in part one of my series, I mentioned that the Mac doesn't have a cut option when it comes to, let's say, dealing with files. The reason I said that is because I really wanted to keep things super simple. There is in fact a cut option and it works a little bit quirky. In order to use it, feel free to copy a file and when pasting it, instead of using the standard command plus V, add the option button to the mix. So command plus option plus V, which will cut paste the item you copied. Now here's something super simple, which I should have included in part one as well. To move a file to your trash, hold command and then hit backspace. If you want to permanently delete something and skip the trash altogether, hold command plus option plus backspace. Don't worry, you'll get a warning. While on the topic of the hidden powers of the option button, if you want to duplicate files in Finder, hold option and then just drag the file or files out of their location and simply drop them, either in the same place or in a new folder. If you want to learn what else you can do with the option button, like the quickest way to trigger do not disturb mode, I have a dedicated video which I'll link at the end of this one. Now I want to test something new real quick. If you're watching this video on desktop, exit full screen and tell me if the buttons below will glow in rainbow colors when I say the words like and subscribe. Does it work? Seriously, let me know in the comments below and while at it, you know, keep it that way because why not? So if you're uploading photos to a classifieds website to let's say list something for sale, you might end up looking for a way to reduce the size of your images because of platform limitations. To handle this situation in Finder, all you have to do is select all the images that you like to reduce the size of and right click to pull out the options menu. Scroll down to quick actions and choose convert images. The convert image window will appear and you'll be able to choose the image size and even the format. The files will be converted as copies in the same folder you open them from. While in that quick actions menu, feel free to take advantage of the built-in remove background feature to instantly extract the subject of a photo to let's say insert into a message. Grabbing the subject from photos works pretty much across the entire operating system like in preview for example. Just look for a copy subject or share subject and take it away. Okay, so one thing that I use all the time when prepping those videos is uploading captions on YouTube. And for that, I use two features in the basic text edit app, which you might find use of in let's say emails. Once you paste the text into text edit, go to the format menu and convert it to plain text, which strips it out of any formatting. Additionally, I always use the find and replace options by tapping command plus F to trigger the find bar and then tick replace. Now I can type the word or phrase that I want to replace in my text up top and then enter the new one below and hit done. If you have an image or text file that you often start from, you know, using it as a template, then you should definitely take advantage of something called stationary pad. In order to find it, in Finder, right click on a file then go to get info. In the info window, you'll see a tick to mark this file as stationary pad. Once you do that, every time you double click to open that file, Finder will create a copy of it, essentially keeping the original one intact. Templates in action. Keeping your desktop tidy when presenting something in meetings leaves an impression. Same thing applies when doing screen recordings. To do this without having to constantly clean your desktop, go to System Settings, Desktop and Dock, and uncheck Show Items in Desktop. Meanwhile, enable Click Wallpaper to reveal desktop to always and witness your files disappearing, leaving you with a clean desktop. Now, don't worry, your files are still there and you can access them by simply tapping on the desktop to activate it or by going to Finder, Desktop, 
While on the topic of keeping things tidy, after each video project, I inevitably end up having to organize and declutter my Mac and clean my Mac X space lens is there to help, giving me bird's eye view of all the files that take up most of my SSD storage. After each cleaning session, for dessert I press the smart scan button, which does the rest of the cleanup process while scanning for malware and overall speeding things up. Clean my Mac X is packed in a beautiful and simple to use interface, featuring a range of useful maintenance tools like the uninstaller, which I always go to when I want to remove an app the proper way without leaving any trace of unwanted library files. The built-in dashboard menu app helps me glance at my computer stats such as battery life and temperature temperature, CPU load and tons more. Clean My Mac X helps me stay on top of my creative process, allowing me to embrace the mess so I suggest trying it yourself by taking advantage of the 7 day free trial and 20% off by using my code This is E and following the very first link in the description below. The next tip that was kindly provided to me by a viewer involves iCloud. If you're syncing your desktop with iCloud or you're using iCloud Drive in general and you want to create a folder or file which you want to store locally on your Mac and not upload it to the cloud all you have to do is add .nosync to its file name. This might come in handy if you have a temp folder that you put large files into which shouldn't require constant uploading. I love the YouTube community. Now I usually avoid focusing on third-party apps in those episodes but the ones I'll show you are big helpers. The first one is a clipboard manager which gives you the ability to refer back to things that you've copied before which is a lifesaver when dealing with documents and important data. Currently I'm using an app called Mackie which lives in the menu bar and it's super simple to use. I just tap on something that I've copied before and it is now ready to paste it again. In the settings of Mackie I've also pointed out to paste without formatting. Aside from the clean interface I also appreciate that I can search back previous clipboards to find exactly what I'm looking for. Yep. What up? Mm -hmm. Sure. Give me just a second. Uh, uh, hold on. Do you know that moment when someone calls you and you need to quickly write something down but you don't have a pen and a piece of paper and you type something in your browser search bar? Enter Tot, a super simple and free app that lives in the menu bar ready to absorb all sorts of temp info you're trying to quickly offload. It has seven color tabs that help you visually make a decision where you can quickly write down something. Okay, so usually when we get to the studio and I plug in my Mac, I prefer to keep it awake at all times as we often copy stuff and shoot things around it. For a long time, I've been using a little app called Theme to keep the Mac awake and not trigger the screensaver by selecting a time frame to stay active knowing that as soon as I unplug it, it will fall asleep again. If you don't want to pay for such an app and feel a little bit adventurous, and you want to feel like a hacker, open Spotlight and search for the terminal. Don't be afraid, this is simple. Just start typing cafe and hit the tab and the terminal will finish the command for you, which is called caffeinate. Hit enter and now the Mac will stay awake as soon as the terminal is opened. While in the terminal, to do a speed test and avoid any of these speed test website ads, just type network quality with capital Q and the Mac will run a speed test and summarize the connection health for you. By the way, I'm sure that I've pointed this out in my previous guides, but you should learn to paste without formatting throughout the Mac, which happens with the combination of command plus option plus shift plus V. Here's what it looks like before and after. Now, if you find this key combo a bit cumbersome and you have a programmable mouse like the Logitech MX Master, for example, you can create a macro, simply telling the mouse to execute those key combos for you upon pressing a desired button. If you want to see the MX Master in action, like moving seamlessly between the Mac and the Windows, for example, you can check out my desk setup video below. I've been a hot corner user forever. For example, if I hit the top left corner of my screen, I open the app drawer, where the bottom left triggers the screensaver, which I made it so that it looks my Mac. What I recently found out, and I wish I knew it existed in my wiki years ago, is assigning a button to those hot corners to avoid accidental triggers. To do that, go to desktop and dock and scroll all the way down to hot corners. Once you tap on the desired hot corner drop down, hold either command or option or control or shift to assign it to work in tandem. Now in order to trigger the hot corner, all I have to do is hold command and then hit it. This video requires creating a lot of screenshots so I can show you everything that I know. And that led me to a tip that maybe it's gonna make sense to you. Now in my downloads folder in Finder, I have created a folder called screenshots, 
By default, all the screenshots end up on the desktop and it usually becomes a total mess. So to keep all the screenshots at bay, I want to point out that all screenshots, whether they're screen recordings or actual uh, you know, photo snaps or screen grabs, I want all of them to end up in that folder. So for that, all I have to do is press Command Shift 5 to open the screenshot app. And here under Options and under Save To, I'll point other location and I'll say that all my screenshots will end up here in the screenshot folder. And now if I do a video recording, it will end up in that folder. Okay, so I'll share two shortcuts that I discovered a while back that have become an integral part in my work routine. Don't be scared, we won't get technical at all. If you're not familiar with the Shortcuts app, on the Mac, iPhone and iPad, it helps you run a series of commands in the form of a single trigger called Shortcut. The first shortcut that I discovered and I modified is called Word Counter. Since I write a lot, I often have to count the number of words used so I can measure the length of my script. 1,267, 1,268, 1,269, one, hold on just a second, <sighs> gotta start from scratch, one, two. With this shortcut, all I have to do is copy my text and run the shortcut from my menu bar. The second shortcut I called Tiny URL. When I copy a URL to put in the description of my videos, it often ends up being too long. With tinyurl, all I have to do is copy it and then run the script to end up with a built-in shortened version that I can place anywhere. I'll share both of these shortcuts and some other tips around that topic in my Sunday newsletter, so check it out and grab them. Next, if you want to save literally hours when using your Mac, you can create a text replacement which works like this. Exclamation mark ls and the Mac immediately replaces my short command with the full sentence. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. To learn how to do that, check out part 2 of my guide right here. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.